In the head region, note the sensitive tapering rostrum, the eyes, and the spiracle that lies behind the eye and is a remnant of the first visceral pouch. There are five gill slits. On the ventral side, there are paired nostrils, a mouth with modified denticles as teeth, and numerous small pores that are the electrosensory ampullae of Lorenzini. Note the paired pectoral fins and single dorsal fin with spine. Below this is the lateral line that can sense pressure gradients. There are paired pelvic fins and a single caudal fin with a heterocircle shape. In both sexes, note the single cloaca. The pelvic fins differ in the sexes. The male has claspers to transfer sperm. The female lacks these. The largest organ in the abdomen is the trilobe liver. In the preserved fish, the two largest lobes have been removed. Food enters the esophagus and passes into the stomach. The spleen lies by the bend in the stomach. The pale pancreas covers a duodenum, which then becomes the ileum, with a distinctive banding pattern formed by a spiral valve internally. The kidneys lie adjacent to the midline, and are clearly seen if the viscera is displaced to the animal's left. Mesenteries are thin sheets of tissue that support the organs. Note the gastric mesentery linked to the stomach, the splenic mesentery going to the spleen, the mesentery proper supporting the intestine, and the mesorectum that supports the rectal gland, an organ involved in regulating water balance. The mesovarium supports the ovary and oviduct. Displace the digestive tract to the animal's left. You will see the large celiac artery that arises from the dorsal aorta. This divides into the gastric artery to the stomach, the intestino-pyloric artery to the duodenum, and the hepatic artery that crosses a mesenteric bridge to the liver. In some animals, a short combined gastrohepatic section may be visible before the gastric and hepatic arteries divide. Now displace the mesentery to the animal's right side to see the anterior mesenteric artery that supplies the ileum and the lenogastric artery that crosses the anterior mesenteric and goes to the spleen. Finally, locate the posterior mesenteric artery that supplies the rectal gland with blood. The female reproductive system starts with the ovaries in the anterior part of the abdominal chamber. When eggs are released, they are taken into an infundibulum or funnel and into the oviduct where fertilization takes place. Eggs or live young develop in the oviduct. The oviducts exit the body at the cloaca. In the male, the testes are cylindrical and also lie dorsally and anteriorly in the abdominal chamber. Sperm enters the epididymis and travels down the coiled vas deferens that lie on the kidneys. Caudally, the duct straightens into a seminal vesicle and bilobed sperm sacs. Sperm then exits into the cloaca, which has been opened up in this example, and passes along the claspers for transfer to the female. The afferent arteries take blood from the heart to the gills. To find them, first remove the skin from the underside of the mouth and gill regions and remove the superficial transverse muscles that cover this area.
Remove the coracomandibular muscle block that runs from the pectoral girdle to the jaw. This exposes two coracohyoid muscles. Remove these blocks by cutting close to the lower jaw and carefully removing the muscles. You are looking for a curving white tubular structure, the innominate artery. There will be one on each side of the fish. Trace this artery out towards the first gill slit. The innominate artery divides into the first and second afferent arteries. In this view, you can just see this division. These arteries travel out on either side of the first gill slit. Two more muscle blocks lie between the innominate artery and the third afferent artery. Carefully remove these blocks and expose the ventral aorta, which is the blood vessel that comes forward from the heart. can now see the first and second afferent arteries and the ventral aorta and the third afferent will be part way along the ventral aorta. It may be helpful at this point to expose the heart more fully by cutting through the pericardium. The third afferent artery arises just past the conus arteriosus of the heart. This runs along the gill between the second and third gill slits. Continue to carefully expose the fourth and fifth afferent arteries and cut away the ends of the gills to more clearly reveal where these vessels are going. The first efferent artery goes to the rostral side of the first gill slit. The second runs between slits 1 and 2. The third runs between gill slits 2 and 3. The fourth goes between slits 3 and 4. Finally, the fifth goes between slits 4 and 5. Note that there is no gill on the caudal side of slit 5. The heart is fully visible in this view. The conus arteriosus is where blood leaves the heart, having been pumped by the muscular ventricle. The soft wall auricle lies dorsal to the ventricle, and the sinus venosus, where blood is returned from the body, is visible if the heart is displaced forward. Make sure you understand the structures of the heart and the afferent arteries and their relationships to the five gill slits. The efferent system takes oxygenated blood from the gills to the body. First, you need to open up the mouth. Put scissors or tweezers into the mouth and cut from the side of the mouth to behind the pectoral fin. Note that the cartilage of the jaw is tough, as may be parts of the gill arches.
Open up the mouth, cutting wool cartilage if needed, and nail the fish to the board. Cut through both sides of the esophagus and clean off any gunge in the mouth or gills. The efferent blood vessels take the blood from the afferent system that is passed through the gills and drains into the dorsal aorta and other major vessels. The efferent arteries are embedded in the tissues of the roof of the mouth. Remove the skin of the mouth, taking care as the arteries are close to the surface. By putting tension on the skin, removal can be quite straightforward if time consuming. The efferent blood vessels will be visible as latex injected pink rubbery vessels. Carefully cut around these vessels to expose them. Oxygenated blood from the gills is distributed to the head and the body. The internal carotid arteries, also called the hyoidean epibranchial, travel forwards and combine to supply the chondrocranium. The paired dorsal aorta may also be visible heading forwards to join these internal carotids. Four major vessels drain from the gills and combine to form the dorsal aorta. These are the epibranchial arteries. If your specimen is well injected, you may be able to locate the pharyngeoesophageal artery that runs from the second epibranchial artery across the third and fourth. Near the end of the fourth epibranchial arteries, the subclavian arteries arise to supply the pectoral fins. Soon after the dorsal aorta forms, the celiac artery arises to supply the digestive organs. Make sure you understand how the afferent and efferent systems combine to take blood from the heart through the gills to the body.